My name is Catherine Lee, and I'm 42 years old. I'm a mother with a son in the fourth grade. I met my husband, Bob, who is three years older than me, at work, and we got married. I became a full-time housewife for a while, but now I work part-time while my son is at school. One day, around 9 p.m., after my son Alex had fallen asleep, Bob, who said he would be late because of a drinking party, came back. And for some reason, he brought my sister, Jane, with him. Hi there. Wait, Jane, why are you here too? Seeing my puzzled face, Bob and Jane grinned. What? Why are you two laughing? Then, Bob, apparently drunk, thrust a paper at me and started saying something that made no sense. It's the divorce papers. $1,000 in alimony and a $5,000 wedding gift. The paper handed to me was indeed a divorce agreement. But what did he mean by alimony and a wedding gift? As I tilted my head in confusion, Jane said mockingly to me, Losing your husband to your sister? How unfortunate. Losing my husband to my sister? No way. That's exactly right. I'm marrying Bob. Marrying? Bob is married to me. That's why we brought the divorce papers. I can't just sign the papers so easily. We have Alex, you know? I whispered so that my son Alex, who was probably dreaming upstairs, wouldn't hear. Alex is already 10 and will be in upper grades next year. He'll be fine without a father. No way. Besides, Jane needs me more than you do. What do you mean? I'm pregnant with Bob's child. What? Jane said, rubbing her belly with a triumphant look. Your child is already grown, so you can raise him alone, right? Obviously, I should be the priority. Priority? It's absurd to prioritize the mistress. But Bob said he'd divorce you for me. I was chosen. You two barely talked before, right? How did it go from that to an affair and a pregnancy? I happened to join the same company as Bob and got assigned to the same department by chance. By chance? Jane had been temping at various companies. So it was a series of coincidences. I'm telling you, it was really just a coincidence. That's why Bob and I got excited about it. It feels like fate. Bob put his hand on Jane's shoulder. He hadn't touched me at all since Alex was born. So, the alimony is $1,000. And the wedding gift for us is $5,000. Bob, you mean the alimony for cheating is $1,000, right? Finally understanding, I quietly trembled with anger. I'm glad you understand. Wait, I don't understand at all. Even if you say that, it's already decided. You're trying too hard. It's painful to watch. It's inevitable. Unlike 30-something Jane, she's 42. A single mom in her 40s will stay single forever. Yeah, you can't afford to be picky. Sorry, Catherine. Their words made me feel utterly miserable. As I held back my tears, they turned their backs on me. Where are you going? To Jane's place. Let us know when you sign the divorce papers. Wait, we're not done talking yet. Goodbye, Catherine. The door slammed shut, leaving the hallway in silence. I won't forgive you, neither of you, Jane or Bob. I glared at the door they had walked out of. A few days later, Jane called me. I stopped washing dishes and picked up my phone. Hello. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Just fine. Surprising. I thought you'd be devastated and broken. 
I can't stay down forever. So, what do you want? Oh, right. I'm going to Bob's parents' house to introduce myself. Just wanted to let you know. Even over the phone, I could picture Jane's expression. She must have lifted her chin and sniffed disdainfully. You have some nerves. I'm impressed. I'm pregnant, and his parents will be thrilled to have a grandchild. Jane, in her naive optimism, didn't anticipate any rejection from Bob's parents. I hope it goes well for you. I'm hanging up now. Okay. Oh, and hurry up and sign the divorce papers. With that, Jane ended the call. All right then. I finished washing the dishes and started making some preparations. The place I went to was Bob's parents' house. I rang the doorbell, and after a while, Bob's mother, Mary, answered. Hi, Catherine. Come on in. Thank you for having me. Bob and Jane haven't arrived yet. Jane lives far from here, so I'm glad I made it in time. You can stay in the other room. Thank you. I went straight to the room adjacent to the living room and quietly closed the door. About 30 minutes later, the doorbell rang. I'm coming. Mary opened the front door and I heard lively voices. Hi, Mom. Hi, I'm Jane. Oh, it's been a while. Since Bob and Catherine's wedding, right? Yes, it has. Mary's sarcastic tone went unnoticed by Jane, who looked around the hallway casually. I heard the footsteps of Mary, Bob, and Jane approaching the living room. They're here. A deep and resonant voice of Bob's father, Henry, echoed. Dad, we're back. Why are you here? Henry answered curtly. What's wrong, Dad? Are you in a bad mood? Bob's voice was followed by Henry's reply. You're the cause of it. What? Henry seemed to have directed his comment at Jane as I heard her confused voice. Henry, did I do something wrong? Jane asked in a voice dripping with false sweetness. Stop that attitude. To Mary and me, Catherine is our only daughter-in-law. Well, sorry. Jane quickly apologized, seemingly understanding the gravity of the situation. Catherine, are these two fools as they seem to be? Without any context, Henry called out to the closed door. Dad, what are you doing? I opened the door just enough for one person to pass through and stepped out. Yes, they are fools. The two of them looked shocked to see me there. Why is Catherine here? Is it strange for me, the concerned party, to be here? When I heard Jane was going to visit Bob's parents, I called them immediately to let them know I was coming too. You've been hiding there all along? That's creepy. Are you that desperate to stay with Bob? Pathetic. About that, Dad. I've decided to marry Jane. Don't be ridiculous. You are married to Catherine. I already gave Catherine the divorce papers. She just needs to sign them. Just need to sign them. What about Alex? He's your son. But Alex is already in elementary school, right? He'll manage without a father. Besides, I'm pregnant with Bob's child. What? Bob, is this true? Asked by his parents, Bob replied proudly. It's true. That's why I want to marry Jane. Another grandchild is on the way. You'll be happy, right? A child of mine and Bob's will be adorable. You'll be happy to have more company, right? Bob and Jane were bubbling with excitement. You fool. 
Henry's voice boomed, shaking the house. The room fell silent. Bob and Jane froze instantly. Happy because a grandchild is on the way? If it were Catherine and Bob's second child, sure. But you two are just cheaters. That's right. There's no way we can be happy about this. Jane, who had believed Bob's parents would celebrate her pregnancy, looked stunned, blinking rapidly. You're not happy? What parents in the world would be happy about their son cheating with his wife's sister and getting her pregnant? Reprimanded by Mary, Bob hung his head like a scolded child. You're 45, aren't you? How long will you live so selfishly? You're no longer a child. You should be a respectable adult, married with a child. And yet, here you are. Mary sank into the sofa, covering her face. Henry potted her back gently. Bob, I never thought you could be so foolish and irresponsible. I'm a grown man. Adults have freedom. They should be able to do what they want. With freedom comes responsibility. You can't just do whatever you want. Don't misunderstand what it means. Seeing a 45-year-old being lectured by his parents was almost comical. Jane looked slightly uncomfortable watching Bob get scolded. Divorcing Catherine means taking away Alex's father. Are you willing to marry Jane knowing that? Well, yes. Then, give Mary, Catherine, and me a reasonable explanation. A reasonable explanation? You must have a good reason if you're going this far to remarry. We need to hear it. I'd like to hear it too. I haven't received a proper explanation yet. Of course, you will explain that to us too. Henry glared at Jane. Me too? Of course. You stole your sister's husband. My in-laws and I waited patiently for the two of them to start explaining. Bob was the first to speak. Jane got assigned to my department, and we were surprised. So we went to have ramen for lunch together. Ramen? Mary couldn't help but repeat the word ramen in surprise. Jane ate it so deliciously. And I thought, this is nice. Catherine never eats much and doesn't eat ramen at all. Huh. And our conversations were really engaging. People who've been working in the company are different. They have more substance than someone working part time. So, you're saying I'm an empty person because I haven't been in the workforce? Well, if I have to say it, yes. Your stories are boring. Like Alex getting a perfect score on a test or being chosen for the relay race at the sports day. Are you saying talking about your own son is boring? I get bored when that's all you talk about. That's terrible. And you call yourself a father? I clenched my fists. But it's true. Jane and I started having lunch together more often and going out for drinks after work. That's why you suddenly started coming home late more frequently. Bob had been lying about drinking with co-workers. It's not a lie. Jane is a co-worker. Exactly. Jane nodded. Then, I gradually became interested in Jane, and before I knew it, we were in a relationship. Before you knew it? A relationship? Bob, that might be excusable for someone in their late 20s. It's fine. You can't stop yourself from liking someone. His excuse sounded like that of a lovesick teenager, making both me and my in-laws dizzy. What about you? Prompted by Mary, Jane started to speak. When I met Bob at work, I felt it was fate. I had been interested in him since he came to our house for the first time, 
and I knew this was my chance. A chance? How could you think that way? I pinched the bridge of my nose with my right hand. So, to summarize, Bob got bored with me and started dating Jane. Jane was interested in Bob from the start and didn't care about me when she pursued him. Is that right? Well, yes. That's about it. There's no way I can accept that. Henry slammed his fist on the table. Startled, I jumped involuntarily. I wanted to hear a reason why you must remarry, leaving Catherine and Alex behind. This is just a story of selfishness. What? I told you the truth. If that's the truth, then you're hopeless. Mary sighed deeply. Even you, Mom? Parents should wish for their child's happiness first. Don't oppose what I want to do. That's right. It's not fair to Bob. Even his parents are against him. Jane began to side with Bob. Even if you oppose, we're getting married. We don't need parental consent for marriage. That's right. We'll do what we want. No matter what anyone says. Bob, stop it. Reconsider. You'll end up unhappy. My in-laws desperately tried to stop their son from following his misguided path. To any outsiders, it was clear that Bob was the one acting irrationally, but he was too agitated to see the situation clearly. Maybe it's time to call them. I opened the door while they were arguing. This time, I opened it wide enough for two people to pass through. I don't care about you anymore, Dad. What kind of childish statement is that? Are you in elementary school? I can make him happier than Catherine ever could. No way. You homewrecker. What? Enough, Jane. Just leave me alone. Huh? What are you doing in someone else's house? What? Mom. How much more disgrace will you bring upon us? Dad, too? In fact, my parents had been hiding in the other room. They had been listening from the beginning. Bob, do you realize just how disgraceful your actions are? Robert? It's been a while. Why are you here? Could it be? I called them. You always meddle. Be quiet, Jane. I always thought you were trouble, but I never imagined you'd go this far. My mom was at her wit's end. I apologize for all the trouble our daughter has caused you. No. It's our son who has caused Catherine so much distress. We should be the ones apologizing. The parents apologize to each other repeatedly. Stop it, both of you. I'm not at fault. I just happened to fall in love with Catherine's husband. A decent person doesn't fall for a married man. With more opposition piling on, Bob and Jane were now overwhelmingly outnumbered. They clung to each other, backing into the wall. Jane, you can't get married. You can't even take care of yourself, let alone a family. That's right. Let's tell everyone here about your past misdeeds. Stop it. What has Jane done? Dad and Mom are just exaggerating. It's nothing serious. Really? Because to you, dead isn't serious? Dead? Catherine. What's this about dead? Tell us more. Jane spent recklessly with her credit card in college. She had no means to repay, so our parents had to cover her debt. Well, that might happen to some extent. I had to borrow money from my dad once when I first got a credit card. And how much was that? About two or three hundred dollars, I think. 
Jane's debt was $10,000. What? $10,000. $10,000? How did that happen? Jane is very vain and prideful, so she frequently bought brand name items and treated her friends to meals. I thought we gave her enough allowance, but Jane has never been good at planning. When we told her to get a part-time job, if she needed more money, she just complained and refused. She's a lazy, spoiled brat. My mom spat out the words. Buying up brands and accumulating $10,000 in debt while still a student. Quite an impressive young lady. Bob, you sure have an eye for talent. Henry said sarcastically making Bob look away in embarrassment. Didn't you notice Jane's things were all branded? I glanced at Jane's bag on the floor. The plain looking bag actually cost around $6,000. Bob probably didn't recognize it without a visible brand logo. That bag cost $6,000. What? Bob looked at the bag at his feet in shock. I didn't notice at all. Of course not. Her shoes are from a famous Italian brand, and those earrings are worth at least $1,000. Bob scanned Jane from head to toe. You've been wearing that much in brands? What's wrong with that? I bought it with my own money. Your own money, really? Everyone turned to look at me. Catherine, what do you mean? Do you mean she has other men besides Bob? No, that's not it. But do you really think Jane, who has been working as a temp, can afford to buy all these brands? That's true. Bob surprisingly nodded in agreement with me. When I looked at Jane, she was staring at the floor, sweating nervously. Jane, do you want to explain? What? I leaned in to look at her face, giving her a chance to speak for herself. It would be more sincere if she confessed. But Jane decided to play dumb. I don't know what you're talking about, but don't make accusations just because you lost your husband. Too bad. Then I'll say it. Jane has been borrowing money from payday lenders. Everyone's eyes widened in shock. You still haven't learned your lesson, you foolish girl. My dad was about to hit Jane, but Bob and Henry stopped him just in time. Jane, what's going on? You promised not to make unnecessary purchases anymore. Jane. Is it true you borrowed from payday lenders? It's just a temporary need, right? Jane stayed silent, ignoring all the questions thrown at her. Say something. Seeing my dad reaching his limit, I decided to explain again. After quitting her first job in three months, Jane survived on part-time and temp jobs. Obviously, her salary couldn't cover brand items, but Jane's vanity couldn't resist. So, she started borrowing from payday lenders. My theatrical explanation made Jane's face turn red with anger. This might be a sickness. Maybe you should see a doctor. My advice seemed to fall on deaf ears. Jane's spending habits haven't changed. She uses her salary to pay off debts, and then borrows more before the next payday, creating a never-ending cycle. A vicious cycle. I never realized she was such a spender, considering her things didn't look overly branded. Bob slumped, resting his hands on his knees. What are we going to do? The baby is almost here. Bob asked as if there was any way she could repay it. But Jane's answer hadn't changed since then. I thought Dad and Mom would help me out. They'll repay it for me, just like before. We won't help you. What? I said we won't help you this time. 
you can't be serious. I'm sorry for borrowing money without telling you. I won't do it again, so please help me just this once. We're really fed up with you. When Catherine told us, Robert and I decided. Jane, you are disowned. Disowned? You're 36 years old now. We don't need to keep spoiling and taking care of you. By the way, you're disowned too, Bob. What? Me too. Both of them panicked as they were disowned by their parents. Why? I was planning to have my debt paid off as a wedding gift and get support once the baby is born. Did you really think you'd get a wedding gift after stealing your sister's husband? How shameless. You're no daughter of mine anymore. Mom. Bob, we won't give you any money either. We're saving it for Catherine and our dear grandson, Alex. Isn't the baby also your grandchild? That's cruel. That's right. It's unfair. The baby doesn't deserve this, but we won't see the child. Yes. What? To us, Alex is our only grandchild. We won't give a penny to any other child. We thought you were prepared for that when you decided to remarry. Bob and Jane had taken their parents' support for granted. Hearing that both sets of parents had disowned them, they turned pale. What are we going to do? Maybe we should call it off. What? Jane glared at Bob, who suddenly got cold feet. He was finally realizing he would be stuck with a debt-ridden Jane and their child. What are you saying now? I've already told my friends about our marriage. That's your problem. You rushed into this without even meeting the parents first. This is my fault? Yes, it is. I didn't know you had debts. That's why I'm having second thoughts. Any man almost 50 years old should easily cover his spouse's debts. That's the first I've heard of that. The two of them yelled at each other. We watched them like spectators at a zoo. After a while, Bob suddenly turned to us and said, I've decided. I'm not getting divorced. Not getting divorced? I'm not marrying Jane. I want to stay with Catherine and Alex like before. Don't be ridiculous. Sorry, but I'm going through with the divorce as planned, whether Bob marries Jane or not. Bob is going to marry me. Stay out of it, Catherine. Jane suddenly grabbed my collar. Our parents stepped forward to intervene, but I shook Jane off myself. Watch it. I'm not letting Bob go. Please take him. I don't want him. I'm not getting divorced. At that moment, the door quietly opened. Mom. Alex, I told you not to come out. Alex had actually been in the other room too. I didn't want him to see this, so I told him to stay home, but he insisted on coming. Even if mom and dad are going through a tough time, don't you want to come? Yes, I think it's important to know what's happening for the future. His response was so mature for a 10-year-old that I was taken aback. So Alex was here. Alex, it's been a while. How have you been? Bob put on an obvious smile and reached out to Alex. But Alex stayed by my side. I've been good. I have fun every day, even without you, Dad. Oh, really? Is there anything you want? Any problems? I'll fix them for you. Bob desperately tried to win Alex over. It was obvious he was using their child as a means to reconcile. I don't really need anything. If I do, Grandpa and Grandma will get it for me. 
But... What? There is one problem. What is it? I'll take care of it. You won't divorce Mom. What? Bob was stunned by Alex's words. See? You'll take care of it, right? So, sign the divorce papers now. Alex pulled the divorce papers from his backpack and placed them on the table. What? Alex? I was even surprised by this. Come on, Dad. Hurry up. Oh, well, Alex. What are you waiting for? Oh, you need a pen. Here. Alex handed Bob a pen, and Bob took it reflexively. Well prepared, I see. Good job, Alex. My parents potted Alex's head. Hurry up and sign. Don't keep everyone waiting. Oh, oh. Under pressure, Bob finally signed the divorce papers. Next, sign these. What now? Documents for alimony and child support. Sign here and here. Wait, we'll need money for our child. Are you trying to take everything? You too. Here are your alimony papers. Me too? Of course, both of you will pay properly. The fact that you're having a baby doesn't concern me. The day Bob left the divorce papers, I prepared the documents with a lawyer. We can't pay this. Considering our own lives, it's impossible. They were pathetic, whining about the mess they had created. Stop whining and sign already. When Henry shouted, the two of them, sweating profusely and scurrying around, froze. Sign it now. Under pressure from everyone, they signed all the documents. I'll send all of Bob's belongings over. Got it. Bob, once you get your stuff from Catherine, leave within a week. Are you really disowning me? Yes, I am. And Jane, don't you dare set foot in our house again. Mom. Well, I'll be leaving now. Wait, Catherine. You're just going to leave me? It's best to get rid of what's unnecessary right away. Sis, wait. I don't have a sister. Goodbye, Grandpa and Grandma. Goodbye, Alex. Come visit us again. Leaving the crying pair behind, Alex and I went home. I had already changed the locks. After that, my divorce from Bob was finalized. Both of them paid alimony and child support, which was a relief. Since Jane didn't have money, she probably borrowed more from somewhere. Bob and Jane didn't end up getting remarried and are in a waiting phase. However, Bob's finances will likely get even tighter as he will probably have to pay child support for Jane's baby as well. As for me, I sold the house I received in the divorce and moved back to my parents' house with Alex. Alex quickly adapted to his new school and enjoys every day. I quit my part-time job and started helping out at home. My dad owns several parking lots, so I will eventually take over. I'm learning a lot from my dad for that time. I don't have to worry about money for Alex's future and am enjoying my days. From now on, I'm determined to do my best as a mother to protect Alex's happiness.